Hi all, welcome to another King's Crusher radio show. So, um, okay, let's carry on looking at the best of the best uh, games from the 19... Um, th these games are from uh, 1910 to 20. So this first game i like to show you, let's just load it up first, is between Alexander Ankine and Oscar Tenner. By the way, I'm trying uh, my updated uh, layout with the sunset because I like sunsets. <laughs> in fact, my brother has is an artist and he's got a similar kind of oh, sunset to in, he, in his room. I hope you uh, is the sunset okay there. <laughs> I just want to quickly ask on stream if you're checking it on stream. Uh, maybe I should be a little bit more uh, centralized. <laughs> Yeah, that's the only snag. Okay, a bit more centre, as far as I can see. Okay. Um, so this this first game, Alexander Alakine, um is um, is is very very interesting, but I must <laughs> uh, say it might not have been an ordinary game in the sense of a competitive game. It might have been a post mortem analysis, apparently of a draw which shows another flight of fancy of Alexander Anakine if that's the case if it was just uh, he he uh, has some amazingly uh, creative made up games on uh, occasion so um, I'm going to add a kibitza here and uh, let's see uh, so e4 and we have e5 and it actually has so this game Cologne Germany uh, 1911 so uh, f4 King's Gambit and there's a variety of ways of handling the King's Gambit now the third most popular in my book is actually Bishop c5 and it seems you know black is seeming uh, with this move to be threatening potentially to take care and uh, Queen h4 check to win this pawn but actually in practice um, I'm not sure this is such a substantial threat uh, in this position um, <clears throat> I'll give you an example so so, so you say knight uh, c3 takes check g3 queen takes this is actually quite good it seems for white uh, Black's given up. If you look at it, Black's given up the dark square bishop. He's going to be potentially vulnerable on dark squares. And in fact, we can even hit a dark square immediately. Queen g4. This is difficult, isn't it? If here takes. And that, that's pinned. So this is already better for white. He's already got a pawn up. The queen's stranded. It's a disaster, actually. It's a disaster. So this, this bishop c5, that's not the principal idea to threaten that. So, you know, if you wanted to sort of set a trap. Knight c3. It's it's a bad move. Bishop takes g1. But anyway, um, n I'm not sure knight c3 is like the main move. It's actually the second most popular. But the main move is actually knight f3. So black played d6. And uh, now we have um, knight c3. Knight f6. So it looks like a Vienna game a little bit. This this position looks a little bit like a Vienna game, which is a kind of polite. King's Gambit in a way the end of the game but um, quite often with white here uh, an idea is to try and nab this bishop you get sometimes white trying to nab this bishop later with knight a4 at some point but here you know e4 is vulnerable so we have knight c6 d3 now there might actually be a threat as soon as this is protected so the knight's duty is relieved here and actually the principal threat is actually knight a4 in this position. You want to get this bishop if it's not tucked away. I'll give you an example. Say black just routinely castled. He didn't in this analysis. So we're doing analysis of analysis. Isn't that recursive? <laughs> analysis of analysis. But I'm trying to put in some evaluations here, right? I think we can grab the dark square bishop. Even if it goes check, we can grab this dark square bishop. Grab it, grab it, grab it. And white will be fine here. You see that white can also castle, of course. 
but white's going to have you know the two bishops pressure on the dark squares layer there might even be the potential for a pin here so yeah that's that's interesting that you know that is often the target but for the moment uh, bishop g4 is played ignoring it seems this kind of positional threat um and actually, this is the move Alexander Alcoval in this analysis plays. He does go for it. He does go for it there. If let's have a look though. If a6, I mean, this is the engine choice. A6. Just, just tuck that bishop away. So you know, knight a4, we could just stick it back there, and that's fine. Uh, if knight d5, that might be actually more testing to play knight d5. And again, black should be, you know, fine. Actually, there is some purpose for this bishop just inhibiting castling and black's fine a little bit more than equal actually but anyway bishop g4 in this game so knight a4 we have e takes f4 so black is giving up that dark square bishop and with it you know a lot of the dark squares you know this this ripples once you take a bishop of a certain color this ripples on all the dark squares actually they're all a bit more vulnerable and white's got this dark square bishop and he takes on f4 knight h5 Bishop e3 hitting c5. And now, you know, black seems to be keen to exploit this pin. This is a bit too tactical, surely. Knight e5. So maybe expecting I mean it could it could be a disaster. It depends how white wants to play this uh position. It could be a total disaster. I'll give you an example. Um well let's see, what would you play in this position? Uh, so white, white play here. What, what would you play? What, what do you think is a good move in this position? Um, <clears throat> so, and if you can find the move, hundred points. If you can find the continuation, the full continuation, then extend that to f you know five hundred points. So, if you've seen the whole continuation, yeah, you're a genius of some sort. Uh, you might have seen the game before, or the analysis before. So what would you play with white in this position? Do we just do we just want to retreat the bishop? Do we want a castle? Do we want a castle? All right, I'm going to show you now. Though the clue is it was a bit of analysis, so you know Alakine has got a great imagination. White is stronger than the dark squares. Okay, someone said bishop takes pawn check. Let's examine bishop takes pawn check. The thing is, white black doesn't have to do this. Then knight takes e5 is very good for white, yes. But black has knight takes f7. Snag. These little snags need to be uh, taken into account, yeah? <clears throat> Nor bishop b3, I, I think, is sufficient, because then actually this is really bad for white. Taking, puncturing that h4 square and totally justifying the knight here, actually. It's total justification for black's knight, e5, uh, knight h5. I think I picked up this uh, idea of a move justifying where a piece is from a club mate, Roy Royce, actually. Sometimes you play a move and it totally justifies one of the opponent's moves. So this weird knight here is justified because actually in this tactical line, King F1, there's there's a knight G3 check, isn't there? Don't we have knight G3 check here? Actually, this is okay, but actually Queen H3 is even stronger. This is even stronger with the idea like rook d6. It's, it's really dangerous. No, okay, so no, we don't want to justify the knight on h5. That's one thing we don't want to do. Nor the queen, which is able to come up here. So yeah, this would all start with bishop takes f3. It would be horrible, actually. So white actually after this knight e5 plays knight takes e5 so offering the queen this has to be taken right 
Now we have bishop takes f7 check. Now black cannot go here because bishop takes c5 wins the queen back. There's no squares. That will just win the queen back uh, with advantage. We can even just immediately take here. Be big material up. Because actually this is hanging here, right? So it takes, we just take on h5. Bishop up. And uh, queen e7, similar case, takes, we just take here. Because, yeah, we're hitting this knight, really. So um, basically, uh, black has to go here and, you know, to try and get an escape route from this check. So bishop takes c5 check, king f6. And can you see how the game could possibly finish in this position? Uh, so white to play here. How would the game possibly finish in this position? Because isn't our knight hanging? And if we move the knight, we drop the bishop. Oh dear. This is terrible news, isn't it? Our knight's hanging. Do we have time for d4? What do we do? What would you play here? Let's see. If we play d4, black can maybe build an escape plan. g6, pop back to g7. Don't want that to happen, do we? King's got to be brought forward. Castling, check. Or rook f1 jack, just the same actually. Only not too many moves here, right? Uh, now in the game we saw king takes e5, and actually that was in, in that was it. Rook f5 checkmate. Yeah. <laughs> if king g5, bishop e3 check, king h4. Now there's a slow way of mating, mate in six, or there's a fast way here with a mate in four. The mate in four is actually rook f five, sealing some exits, threatening, well, especially this one, to relieve the bishop for bishop f two check, which will be mating here. And there's very little black can do here. Very little about bishop f2 check and give up the queen to slow things down. But it's a mating net, it's a mating net, which is not going anywhere. Bishop f2, the killer threat in this position. Yeah. Okay, so yeah, yeah, it just shows. Uh, so this line, this is interesting analysis, uh, I would say. Very, very interesting analysis from Anakine. Definitely worth a tenor <laughs> from tenor. Now, Oscar Tenor, by the way, um, was actually a play. He does have some games, uh, chess games come. 47, in fact. Uh, yeah, he wasn't just one of those one offs. Uh, actually, he drew, with, he drew. Let's have a look at the game which this might have been based on, just to expand on this little story we've got going on here about this bit of analysis. So there was actually a game between them in 1911. I, d I don't know about us nowadays. Have we lost some fun or something? I mean, you're at some tournaments. You have a boring draw. Do we stick around to create uh, an interesting masterpiece with the opponent? Could it have been this game? This was Alakine Tenor, a draw in Colonia 1911. Knight f3. Bishop c4, d3. This rings a bell, right? This rings a bell. White did take off that dark square bishop. There was knight h5. Uh, slightly different, huh? But here, our black played queen e7. Huh. White is slightly better technically according to the engines. He played bishop b5. 
I mean, F5, Black's actually played really energetically in this game. So Turner was actually a play, it wasn't just some sort of puppet or something. Black's played really aggressively against Elekine. White dub trebled, not doubled, trebled the pawns here. Impressive. But black still with a position here. Now if uh, D takes, I think white's in trouble almost. Well, it's okay for it's okay to take as well, actually. But he played knight g5 and black hassled. Knight takes. Black's just got very active pieces. He's he's not playing like a total moron. Yep. Very dangerous. And the game fizzled. And a draw was agreed here. At move 23. Yeah. <laughs> this was this was the draw. So the other one was a post mortem. What an amazing thing to do with a post mortem, just create a different game which is more impressive. You see there's a use for these draws. You see, if only Giri could use all his draws to create masterpieces, you know, that he won, then would people moan? No, there'd be these other masterpieces that are based on the draws. You see, you can use draws for this sort of thing. Yeah? I think that's a very important lesson here. That you know, when Giri draws, we can work on creating a fictional version of his game. Yeah? <laughs> you see? <laughs> oh, oh, oh dear. Uh, okay, so anyway, let's go on to another game. <laughs> oh dear. Nimzovic against Alipin. Yeah, so Nimzovic against Alipin. So Alipin is famous actually because. Um, uh, he did that boring ver variation against the Sicilian defence called the Alpin, right? <coughs> variation. C3 Sicilian, as it's otherwise known. Uh, so let's have a look. E4 from Mimsovic. E6. D4, D5. We have Knight C3. Knight F6. Oh, I've got some notes here by Nimzovich as well. I don't think they're out of copyright, so I can mention them. Uh, knight takes d5, surrender of the center. Knight f3, c5. Knight takes, queen takes. And we have bishop e3. Already white is a slight, slightly better, slightly better. But this doesn't help black that much. Well, maybe there's not much else to do, actually. c takes, knight takes is played. A6, but black has got a solid pawn structure. Okay, he's behind the run, but he's got a solid pawn structure. Actually, it should be fine for black, yeah. But black gets a bit naughty after this. Bishop e2, tempted by the bait of taking on g2. And uh, black did take on g2. In fact, it's the top engine move <laughs> to take on g2 because engines don't care. They're just, they don't care. Okay. According to Nimzvich, the consequences are grievous. But he didn't have to play against engines, did he? Because uh, I bet you they just take all his material and laugh. Okay, so bishop f3. Now the queen went to g6. Probably better as queen h3. Can black actually survive with queen h3? You wouldn't have... I mean... You wouldn't have thought so, and you wouldn't have hoped that black survives, because it looks as though black is really asking for it. So should black survive? In fact, even the engine is saying white is much better here after rook g1. The compensation is enormous, right? So anyway, but we get an even worse move. We get queen g6, queen d2. And already it's, it's really difficult to play this position with black. It's incredibly difficult to play this. I think a routine move is bound to get smashed because if black's planning to castle kingside we've already got a road to the king you know if black played bishop e6 i think we can just castle queenside and if black's going to do this i think the king just gets terminated in fact the queen's like checkmated because if queen f6 bishop g5 wins that bishop on e7 
<clears throat> or the queen. <clears throat> so that's not even bishop e7 is out of the question. So we have e5, and Nimzovich writes the crisis black means to get rid of the unpleasant knight so that he may have some measure catch up in development. But white, what does white play in this position? White's play. Yeah, he just castles actually, he doesn't mind losing that knight. After e takes, bishop takes, look at that, we got this gigantic e file. Knight c6, which seems to defend any d8 naughty stuff, right? But, I think I might have shown this game on my channel by the way, white right play here. What's the most crushing move? So it's the top engine move as well, which Nimzovich plays in this position. He plays actually the top engine move after knight c6 which is it's actually a boiling the frog or king move actually is what I call it it's when you construct a mating net as well sometimes those mating net construction moves are stronger than forcing moves you know the mating net construction moves sometimes trump you know the, ob the more obvious forcing moves so mating net construction is the clue yeah mating net construction the quite they're quite moves I don't know you're probably missing a lot in, in your games I, I know I have been until a few months but I started thinking about boiling the frog how this quiet move in this puzzle eluded me why it was so impossible to find it because we're fine-tuned to look for forcing moves and these these mating net construction moves go under the radar they're not they're not that forcing yeah but they set the tone for forcing moves to be much more powerful because they do that mating net construction yeah so the as an example here if you've said rook hg1 jordan couch jordan jordan uh, couch um this isn't a strong because actually bishop e6 you see and that one move of not doing a mating net construction then the forcing moves are far less they're far less effective the advantage drops to like minus uh, to just nearly less than plus two right so there's actually a mating net construction move which totally destroys any forcing move it's like um what is that like i don't know what it's like i can't give a metaphor why that's the case I actually I, I wish I had a metaphor for that I'm usually good on the metaphors but I, I can't I don't know if you've got a good metaphor please let me know why why a quiet move should trump a forcing move they provide a backbone for forcing moves I'm going to show you it provides a backbone for forcing moves because Bishop f6 is played and there's no there's no time for this because actually not just cutting the kings of scrape scares but actually it means that anything on d8 here is a killer bishop takes c6 and queen d8 so that mating net construction move is an absolute killer right in this example variation so it seems here i don't know why this is i haven't really scientifically tried to demonstrate this why a quiet move should trump a forcing move why should the tri quiet move Trump rook rook here. We can't we can't do this now. We can't do anything like this now. If we play this, there's time for black to play bishop e7. Isn't that weird? How that move order 
this move order here is so much more effective. I mean, is that some sort of secret magic? Why is this move order so much more effective? So anyway, you might think there's other opportunities for defense here, right? If bishop e7, we have bishop takes c6 and queen d8. And if bishop takes, we have rook takes d8. Weird, isn't it? I mean, just the principle of it. You'd think forcing moves are stronger, right? Because they're more forceful, right? But actually, it's the reverse. <clears throat> so black tries um, queen takes f6. Now we have rook he1 check. Playing in the king and queen files at the same time, Ms. Witch writes. Yeah, it talks about the king and queen files. The D and E file. King, actually, it's more kind of it's kind of nostalgic to call them the king and queen files. Oh, I'm playing on the queen file, playing on the king file. Interesting. Yeah, maybe they should. That's interesting. So we have bishop E7. And now bishop takes C6 check. So now, if if takes either way, then there's queen D8. It takes here, there's queen a So black tries king f8, and now white's play Can you see the what you play here? Well, I hope there's a loud move. Yeah, the loud move. Queen d8. Bishop takes. Rook e8. Checkmate. <clears throat> yeah, and. Um, okay, so there's these two games which carry on this collection of the best of the best games. Um, and there was the bonus draw, which wasn't very exciting. <laughs> now, um, yeah, I, I think uh, it's it's pretty. The temperature is pretty hot for streaming at the moment, so I think I'm going to end it on a short session tonight. So I hope you found it kind of amusing. Okay, so thanks for coming, and we'll carry on next week on something. Uh, we might be transitioning to, uh, believe it or not, in the near future. Uh, a kind of banter blitz at some point, but that might be some way off. So for the moment, we'll carry on going through these best of the best games. I think for the foreseeable, but it, yeah, there might be a transition to banter blitz. Uh, I've heard. Um, so anyway, I hope uh, you have a nice rest of the week. And um, okay, thanks so much. Uh, likes appreciated, etc. Cheers then. Thanks so much.